Okay, um, so for this one, we're talking about the different types of variation. And for this, we're going to go through intraspecific versus interspecific variation, continuous versus discontinuous variation with examples. And then we're going to look at some of the, the reasons for this variation. Some of it is genetic, some of it is environmental, and some of it is a mixture of both. So first thing we have to uh, know is what actually is variation. So if we're talking about interspecific, we're talking about variation between, so that's intra, here's our inter. Interspecific means different species. So what makes species, uh, different species different from each other? Well, we have different genomes. So we've got a different set of uh, genes. So different genomes equals different genes. Whereas if we talk about intraspecific, well, that's the variation between individuals of the same species. So we have the same genes as each other. Humans all have the same genes. That's why we're all called humans or homo sapiens. So what makes us different this time is we have different alleles from each other. Okay, there's different alleles between the individuals. And why are there different alleles? Because there's mutations that have occurred. So we also, there are genes that we share with different species as well. And we should know that now because if we follow the, the hypothesis of phylogeny, we all come back from the same um, ancestor. But with humans, there is no difference in genes. It's just difference in alleles. And if we talk about differences between different species, it's different alleles, but it's also different genes as well. All right. So if we look at, let's focus just on intraspecific, intraspecific variation. So variation within the species. Uh, we've got an example here on the right, which is showing uh, on the x-axis height and the number of people. And we can see here, this is telling us, this is what's called continuous variation. And it's the reason why it's continuous is because we have two extremes. We've got one on this end and one on the other. And that's where our lowest numbers are. And most individuals fit within the mean, this middle group here. So this would be our continuous variation. There is no uh, gaps in each of these levels here. So we call these intermediates. There's from, from this score of let's say 100, 129, to 175, every single intermediate is being represented. So all values uh, are, are shown within this. So you've got this complete spectrum in, in height. There's no gaps in within this whole population. So a continuous variation is going from all the way from a low number to the low extreme, all the way up to the top extreme with no gaps in between. And continuous variation can be illustrated using uh, you could use a, a line graph and you get this, you tend to get this normal bell curve distribution. Uh, right. So some traits like height are considered to be continuous. Well, the reason why they're continuous is because they're dictated by more than one gene. So it tends to be polygenic traits. So height is polygenic. It's not dictated by one gene. It's the combination of different genes uh, working in conjunction with each other. And then we've got discontinuous over this side. So discontinuous variation. You can see here now there is no little line going from one to the next. There's these gaps. So discontinuous variation is dictated by one gene. So depending on what your the version of your gene is, is going to dictate what you are. And discontinuous, unlike continuous, it's not affected by the environment. So not affected 
by environments. So whether you are, doesn't matter what country you're born in or what food you eat, the blood group you are born with is, is the blood group you'll keep. Whereas height, uh, you may have a combination of genes that dictate that you could potentially be really tall, but if the environment you're in has meant that you're mal malnourished, you're not going to get to the, the potential height that you might have got to. All right, so discontinuous variation examples here are, is our, our blood group. You're either A, you're either B, you're O, or you're a combination of AB. That's it. There are no others. Um, other examples could be your gender. You're either male or you're female. That's it. Um, continuous variation. Other examples could be uh, height of stem or plants or um, number of flagella on bacteria. The flagella, if I just draw bacteria, the flagella are these little things that come off here. How many does it have? Okay, so I've already talked a little bit about this idea of genetic and environments can combine together to have an effect on things like height. So let's just talk about, you, you can have variation within a population just based on the environment. So uh, traits or cosmetic feet change that might have occurred could be things like, have you got a scar? That's the environment causes that. Tattoos. Uh, genetic, where nothing dictates it, could be gender. Uh, your blood group. But there are lots of examples where both are working in conjunction with each other. So we've already talked about one. So this is our Venn diagram. This middle bit is showing that genetic and environment working together at the same time. Height, your weight. So your ability to store fat is, is affected by genetics as well. Some people are better at holding on to fat than, than others, but depending on what their diet is, somebody who was genetically um, more likely to hold on to fat, if they're not accessing foods, they're not going to, to have that fat on them. Another example of where um, environment can actually, rather than environment and genes combining together, there's a, a good example of where the environment can have a direct impact on the actual activation of someone's genes. So there's there's actually a gene for associated with baldness. So it says an allele for baldness. So if you have this allele, you're much more likely to go bald. And this allele or this version of a gene, if it's in an environment where there's a lot of testosterone, it becomes activated. And this is one of the reasons why men are more likely to go bald than women. Women can have this allele for baldness, but because their levels of testosterone are much lower, this allele isn't being activated and women aren't going bald like men do. So just a good example of how environment has a direct impact on the activation of our genes.